Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, just one second. Yes. Wow. As Rashad was going over these points, the battle between the North and the South, um, we understand that, as he said, is rightfully so between it's the battle that's taking place between Christ and Satan. And when you go to Daniel 1140, we know we, we, Daniel 1140 lays out, as we said, this earthly view of things, where we see that it's, it's the, uh, the um, atheism versus Catholicism, which is, is Satan versus Satan. And Christ says, what's going to happen to his kingdom? It's, it's going to be broken. Who's going to break it? Daniel 12.1 tells us it's Michael, right? It says, Michael shall stand up. It's going to come to an end. Because he says, Satan casts out Satan. His kingdom shall come to an end. And that's where Michael stands up. It comes to an end. And when Michael stands up, he says he's going to, he's going to send a fire. And it's going, to put, it's, going to, it's, going to, um, it's going to intensify that battle between the north and the south even more. It's going to, it's going to be with fury. And this is where we're coming to, where um, Biden is only ruling because he represents the south. He pushed against the north, which was Republican, which was represented by trump and and where the bible teaches us that the kingdom that rule according to judges 9 was a, obtained through treachery and the lord is going to come to to overthrow that system and place back in place back the rightful ruler so to speak like satan he usurped rule in this earth but christ came to set things back in order and then he's going to take back the kingdom amen so it's teaching us that the north is going to come back at, at, at some point in time. So we understand the Lord is going to send this fire here. And uh, for the past few weeks, we were going over um, Satan now being cast out. And from, from, from the beginning of this, from the fifth day of the fourth month down to the end, which is represented by the, the temple cleansing, because at the first temple cleansing, Christ cast out Satan. And then he sat in the temple and he taught the people for that time. And Ellen White says that was an illustration that one moment, in that one day, Christ was illustrated in the three years. Y'all follow? That one day of casting on people out, he was illustrated in three days. God is teaching us something with these things. So um, at the end, so Christ was illustrated in three years worth of work by right there. And, and for three years, he cleansed the temple, casting Satan out um, of the heart of people. He didn't come at that time to set up an earthly kingdom. He came to set the, the kingdom up in our hearts. And when the kingdom is set up in our hearts, we get the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So when we have the truth enshrined in our heart, the things that God is teaching us, we get the whole world. We get to go into the world and preach this gospel to, to, to everyone. And in measure, the Lord is going to do that, is fulfilling that here. So from here to here, he's being cast out. And as I said, each day, this, for three years, Christ did it. One, two, and three, right? So each day is represented this work. So when we come here, we should see this work in the second day. Because that's what he, you follow? He just repeated it. He just repeated it. So right here, we're coming to this point where the Lord is going to repeat this work once again. Right? Amen. And that's nice. Church, world. Amen. So he's going to repeat this work. But when he repeats it, from day one, when Christ cleansed the temple, did, his, did, his, did his, the manifestation of his power decrease or did it increase? It increased. So this is an increase of the manifestation of the power of God. And this third day is a greater increase of the manifestation of the power of God. So I just want to go through that. Um, and I want to encourage us this week. Uh, our two videos are recorded going more in details on this casting out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to blend some of these thoughts. We, I went over this in the first presentation, and I'm just going to um, take from those two videos. I'll just encourage us if we, when we have the time, we could um, watch them. Um, they will help with some more of these things. And in the last one, we were going over that Genesis 19 and Matthew chapter 8, um, Revelation 12, I think verse 9, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's between 9 and 11, somewhere in there, where there was war in heaven. And Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels, and there was and Satan was cast out, and and he's cast out here, cast out here, and he's cast out here, right? It's it's just there's things in our hearts that must go, and and Ellen White says we must be delivered from Satan's power within before we can be delivered from his power without, 
So for three years, Christ is delivering us from Satan's power within. And the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, deliver you. So Christ is delivering us from error right now. And when we're delivered from error, we can go to the world and, and, and give, this, give this message. So Matthew 8, we, we saw that when Satan, is, when Satan was cast out of heaven, where did he go? The to the earth. So every time Satan is cast out, he, he requests to go somewhere else. Amen. The Lord wants us to understand this. Every time we're delivered, the Lord is going to permit him to go harass somebody else. And every time somebody's delivered and we're not delivered, God is going to permit Satan to harass us. It's vice versa. It works both ways. Amen. The Lord wants us to understand that because the Lord never punishes without a what? So what is he doing? He's warning us that if we turn from this light, he's going to give Satan permission to harass us. Amen. That's what he's teaching us. Just like we turn from Satan, he gives his angels permission to comfort us. Amen. So if we receive the truth, we will receive comfort. And Ellen White says there's comfort in the truth. So if we receive error, tormented. Amen. That's what we're, that's what the Lord, the Lord wants us to. Un and now that we, now that we understand this, he's going to perform it. Amen. That, that's what it means to hear the message. When people come under the sound of the message, you're now warned. And, and, and how we take this warning, that's, that's up to you um, at this point. So let us continue. The temple cleansing, Christ was warning. That's what he was doing. He was warning them. Um, so Genesis 19, we're familiar with it. I'm not going to read these verses. So it says, we know the story. Two angels come to Sodom. They come to investigate to see if they're worthy of the judgment. So right here, these two angels come. So right now, God is doing investigation to see if the judgment that he's about to bring upon the cities is worthy of the judgment he's going to bring. Amen? And, and, and he's walking us through it, and we're understanding these things. And we're going to reach this point where the men of Sodom is going to surround our house. And, and that's the first sign that Sodom is worthy of the judgment that it should receive. So, and, and that's what we're coming to. Now, if we don't understand all of these things, we have many videos illustrating these points. I'm just bringing these things together to go into these, to, um, I'm just building up on things that's already in place and I'm trying to refresh our memories and how we laid some of these things out. So Genesis 19 is showing us this and I'll just read um, verse nine in the notes. And it says, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he will needs be a judge. Actually go back up to verse, um, go back to verse seven. So Lot goes out here, right? And Lot said, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Rashad was going over this. I think it was from Psalms or Psalms or Job, right? Psalms. And Lot, Lot is trying to reason with them. Amen. Did it work? No. Nope. Nope. Ellen White says it was like oil being poured on the fire. She said Lot's words were like oil. So if Lot is pouring out oil, what did he, how did he get it? He received it from the two angels, right? So right here in this time, we should be receiving what? We should be receiving oil. And Ellen White says the oil is a symbol of communication. Amen. So, and yeah, amen. Thank you for that point. I almost forgot. We come to this point, we enter the bedchamber, right? Because where was Lot going to do? He's going to bed. And he invited the angels in his house. And because of that invitation, the angels opened up the secret to him. Amen. Because of that invitation. So the Lord has taken us to the bedchamber. And when he takes us to the bedchamber, there's going to be trouble. Because Satan does not want us to go in bed with Christ. Amen. He doesn't want a lawful marriage. Those people were coming there to, to introduce a false marriage, a false system of worship. That's what they came at Sodom to, to, to bring Lot out to join, right? That's, so right here, there's going to be this false system that we're going to see. And the Lord is going to bring trouble because of this, this false. Now, that's one story. Genesis 19 is showing us a people who, who um, Lot's word was like oil and it only made them angry. So when we get to this point, if we receive the message that the Lord is sending us now because the Lord is washing us from here to here, right? That's what receiving the oil is. He's washing us from, from there to there. And if we're receiving this message, because of this message, those who don't like it, our words is going to be like oil. And they're only going to be angry at what we're saying. 
But now I want us to Matthew 8 now. Go to Matthew 8. Go down to Matthew 8. Matthew 8 is now showing us a, a two demon possessed people. Was the sodomites possessed? Yeah. Most certainly they were, right? <laughs> Just connect it to Romans chapter 1. The Bible says God gave them up to vile affections. So if they were given up, who were they given to? They were given to Satan. So that means God, in order for them to be given up, the Lord delivered somebody. Somebody was delivered and they were given up. Y'all follow? The Lord wants us to, to, to bring these things together. So Matthew 8 is showing a people who was one of them, but what did they do? They repented. I, I just want y'all to go with me to Matthew 8, verse 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of Gergesenes, these two stories are connected. That's what I want us to see. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fear, so that no man might pass by that way. Was, was the angels able to pass by that way? No, they were not able. The man of Sodom came there because they were not permitting them to pass by that way. Amen. So that's why they come past the house to prevent them from passing by that way. All right. So these two demoniacs were not permitting anyone to pass by that way. And Christ went that way. The two angels went that way. They went there to do a work. Um, it says, verse 30, it says, And there was a good way off from them, and a herd of many swines feeding. All right. So these two demoniacs heard feeding. These two, two demoniacs, they rushed upon Christ, just like the men in Sodom rushed upon Lot, and Christ told them to stop. The men on Sodom, the men of Sodom did not stop at Lot's word. But the demoniacs, they stopped at Christ's word. Amen? So it's teaching us that there's one group that's not going to stop doing what they want to do, but there is some that is going to stop. That's what I want us to see. So even Genesis 19 is showing us a group that's not going to turn from their evil ways. Matthew 8 is giving us a view of a people who are going to turn from their evil ways, who was possessed just like them, that they're going to repent at Christ's words. And, they're going to, and the Lord is going to deliver them and send the evil spirit into the herd of swine. Right. So what we're now going to look at is this herd of swine that who's who are these herd of swine that Christ is going to send the evil spirit into. So um, more details was in this in the last two presentations that we went over. I just hope that we're following the, the train of thought. Genesis 19 is giving us a view of 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 those who are possessed by Satan who are not going to repent. Matthew 8 is giving us a view of those who are possessed by Satan and are going to repent. There, one group is not going to repent at the preaching, and one group is going to repent at the preaching. There are, and where do we see this illustrated? Easily. The upper room. Amen. That's one place. How about the cross? Amen. Ellen White says the two thieves represent the two great classes. Amen. Or Cain and Abel. You, we could take all the illustrations of the two and bring them right here. There's always two groups. Amen. So I'm just bringing these two stories together, showing there's two groups. They're, they're both possessed. One repent, one doesn't. And, and as Swindon said, the upper room, all of them were possessed by Satan. Eleven of them repent, one doesn't. So maintaining, it's, so it's only two people. Even though it's twelve, it's only two. Amen, y'all follow? It's just two. So at God's time and our time, not the same. And we just have to see those things in, in, in that manner. Because 144,000, even though it's 144, how many is it? Just one. All 11 of those disciples were now just one with Christ. They were now married to Christ in that upper room. And Judas refused the marriage and he went out. So go down. So the herd of swine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Matt, so I just want us to see now Matthew 8, Genesis 19, we're just bringing these two together, making the connection of the, the two possessed, the sodomites possessed, these men possessed, um, one group, Lot, they didn't receive his word, these two demoniacs, they received Christ's words, and those who receive Christ's word, the demoniacs is showing us a story of what Christ is going to do for us when we receive his words. He's going to cast Satan out, and he's going to put him in the swine, and the, the, um, the, 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 the era that was controlling the 12 disciples, the 11 disciples received the truth Christ set before them. And Jesus took that era and he put it in Judas, right? Which is a symbol of the papacy. The papacy just embodies every era that's on earth. It's just in one man. 
Amen. Yes, that's the unclean and hateful. That the, the Catholic system is that swine system. A, a pig eats everything. That's what a pig does, right? Everything. Nothing passes the mouth of a pig. And, and the Lord wants us to, to, to understand these things because the natural teaches the what? So the sodomites, they eat anything. It, everything goes with the sodomite. Isn't that what we see the southern power is? Anything goes. There's no restriction to the sodomites. There's no restrictions to the democratic institution. But there is a restriction to the Republican institution, right? We're not for one or the other. We're just showing, using these symbols to illustrate the two classes of people that are battling. So, 2 Peter, go down with me now, and let's look at the swine, because all of the Bible is speaking about the swine. Amen? So let's go through the, let's look at what Peter has to say about the swine. Verse, um, 2 Peter 2.10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Do we see people despising government today? Yes. Peter's talking about them. Amen. That's who he's talking about. And, and we have to make sure that's none of us. We are not to despise government. We're to be subject to whatever government the Lord allows to be ruling. We have to be subject as long as the law is, is a law we can maintain. But verse 12. It says, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they what? Understand and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worth of them than the beginning. Did Sodom escape the pollution? No. If Christ dealing with men is ever the same, did they escape the pollution? Did not Abraham rescue them? Yeah. Didn't, did, didn't Abraham set things right in Sodom again? Yeah. So God washed them. That's what he did. He washed them. He delivered them and he made them right again. But they entangled themselves again. You follow? Amen. So they now become a, they now become a natural brute beast. I hope y'all y'all following the thought. This saves me from going to Genesis and running through and and and, and proving these things. Um, did Sodom was Sodom washed? And they were washed because Abraham delivered them. To be delivered is to be what? Washed, right? That's, amen. So, they, so Christ delivered them from the kings because the, the, God sent the kings against them to punish them. And if they learn from it, Abraham went and re because of Lot, Sodom was delivered. And they were washed and Abraham set things right before them. And Ellen White says they were convinced that a, 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 a mighty God was guiding Abraham. They knew of the God of they knew of the God of Abraham because of Abraham and their minds was washed. But nonetheless, Sodom went back to their old ways and the latter end of Sodom was worse than the beginning. The Sodom teaches us the gospel. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Belshazzar is the latter end. Yeah. Amen. Because Nebuchadnezzar was cleansed. And the, and the that he was a beast. Yes. Amen. Amen. So one group repents and one what? Doesn't. Nebuchadnezzar was a brute beast, but he repented. Belshazzar is a brute beast. He saw the evidence, but what didn't he do? He rejected it. That's right here. That's right here. It's, it's, they're right there. And it's all talking about us, too. It's all talking about us. So it says, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Sodom escaped through the knowledge. They took knowledge that God was with Abraham. Because Abraham could not del have delivered Sodom unless a supernatural power as assisted him in taking down five kings. One king took down five kings. So they knew that they knew that a, a powerful God was with Abraham because he was one person going challenging five kings and he took them down. Amen. So so they had sufficient evidence that God they had the knowledge that there was a God with that man, but they rejected it. Amen. Go ahead. Besides Gideon, who's 300. three hundred men for a, a took down a you uh, uh amen. Men too. You might be right. He said three hundred men from his own. That is really nice. And, uh -huh. men, and they said yeah. when he conquered the Midianites, everyone knew that it was that it was God. Amen. 
I, 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 I never thought of that before. That's a really nice, if it's 300 with Abraham, that's a really nice connection. Amen. Because Gideon, he was, doing the, he was doing the work of his father. You follow it? So the Lord ties those things together. He should have known. Because Lot represents a people who goes back to their vomit. Amen. That's what Lot represent. He went to his vomit. Lot left Ur and he went back to Ur. Ur just manifested itself in Sodom. The papacy is Ur and Ur manifests itself in the atheism. You follow? Atheism is Sodom. It's still the papacy. It's still the man of sin. So Lot left one city. The Lord cleansed them, giving them knowledge, but he went back to the city. So it represents people who accepted this message. And what did they do? They went back. But did the Lord forget them? No. Why didn't he forget them? Because they still possess the knowledge of Abraham's God. Some of those people who left this movement are still holding on to the knowledge. And the Lord didn't forget them. They're possessed, but the Lord's going to deliver them. Lot was possessed, but the Lord delivered him from the beginning. He was, he was receiving the oil. Amen. And, and, and going down. Three eighteen. Okay, thank you. You was gonna say something? Yeah, that's 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 why um, Lot's wife had to be um, turned into a pillar of salt because she had already received the two admonitions. She left. She left Ur. She was washed, and then the Lord came to wash them again with the two angels. Amen. Sodom. But then she still went back and looked for the leeks and the onions of of, of Sodom. And no so more by, deliverance. Amen. So by looking back. She, she showed that she did not receive the cleansing that was, that was given unto her. Amen. She had to be restored there. That's why she couldn't go no further. Amen. I was just wondering, would it be Lot's responsibility, responsibility for her sins because she didn't Yeah, he, mm -hmm. well, it was her fault and his, it was yeah, both their yeah, faults. She had the responsibility too, but her sins didn't receive. Because remember when they were choosing the land and Abraham allowed him to choose, take whatever wanted and his, his eyes went all the way to you know the best piece which was to serve Sodom and then look what happened and here and here's how I agree with you but what what would you think that made Lot choose that the influence of his wife is why he chose that territory so his wife had an influence over his mind what is the Lord teaching us sin lust has an influence over the decisions we make in life Many a times we make decision because it looks good, because there's an evil in our heart that desires that. And to, and, to, and to satisfy the desires of our heart, we choose it, even though the Lord says that's not what's best for us. But to satisfy the woman that's on my heart, I choose that good land. But that good land takes me to the city. Yeah, amen? That's, a, that's the spiritual lesson that the Lord, there's a woman sitting on all of our hearts, and it's called desire. It's called lust. And, and, it, and, and it doesn't come to us very as a dragon it comes to us by saying look it looks pretty over there go and get it it looks very nice you would love it and we satisfy that carnal desire the bible calls it amen as a beautiful the world looks beautiful my heart says the world looks beautiful my heart says that rap music sounds good that r&b music the reggae music the soca music whatever music it sounds good that's the desire and what does the lord say about that desire crucify it Lot was supposed to crucify that desire. How? He was supposed to let Abraham choose first. Abraham had the right woman on his heart, and he could have withstand the temptations of going in that direction. Lot didn't have the power to withstand that temptation, and he fell. Amen? He was the higher power, but Lot didn't what? Subject himself to that power. He was supposed to let Abraham choose. He wasn't supposed to choose, but because he allowed the woman to persuade him and he wanted to be first, so he chose. Amen. Despite what he was, but I guess his wife, she was so lost into all the vanity, she couldn't help but look back. Basically, what Lot was supposed to do, he was just supposed to be a man. 
like Christ, he was supposed to stand up to, to the affections of his wife and tell her, no, that's what he was supposed to do. Amen. And when she doesn't want to submit, what does Christ say? No. He just says, no, we're not going there. Amen. So Lot was just supposed to stand up and be a man. Abraham stood up and he was a man. He fell once when he listened to the voice of his wife and he never did it again. Right? You see that? Adam fell because he listened to the voice of his wife. So the Lord is teaching us a lesson. Woman, learn, the, learn what it means to subject yourself. And husband, learn what it means to really love your wife. That's what the Lord is teaching us. To love her, sometimes we got to say no. And she just have to submit to that. Amen? So let's go on. There's valuable lessons in God's word. And, and many marriages could have been avoided breaking up if we just heeded to these valuable lessons. Somebody has to play the part of submission. Right. Someone has to do it. We can't. You know, Alexander said Darius sent Alexander a letter and said, listen, let's rule this world together. Alexander tore that stuff up. Tell him the world only has one son. There's only room for one ruler. And I'm like, man, he learned from the natural. There's only room for one ruler. But we can share the throne with God. But but Exodus tells us Pharaoh said only in the throne. I will still be greater than thou. Amen. Adam and Eve was to share the throne, but Adam was still greater. When, the, when it comes down to the decision, who did it fall on? Always the man. But, we, but we'll do these things together. Life lessons. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, so going down, back to Jude. Brute beast. We want to look at this brute beast. Um, it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. I want to show now that Jude and Peter and Matthew and Genesis talking about the same thing. And I exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. What was Lot doing right here? He was contending for the faith, right? That's what he was doing. That's what that is illustrating to us. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and less, I'm not saying it right, lasciviousness. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. It's good to remember, right? It's good to read again what we already know. Amen? Because here's, he, here's why he's doing this. I put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. So even though we know these things that I'm going over, I'm trying by the grace of God to put us in remembrance, right? We should do this. It says, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, Afterward, what? He washed them. They became brute beasts. And what did he do? He destroyed them. Amen. He saved them from Egypt, took them through the Red Sea, washed them. He gave them a knowledge of his saving power, gave them um, Mount Sinai. And then they said, we desire the leeks and onions of Egypt. They wanted to go back. They were a swine wanting to go wallow again in the mire. Amen. That's why he's saying this. He's going to connect it for us. He's going to show it to us. He says, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Lucifer was washed. Same. He's connecting the two things. He's doing line up online like we're doing. And he says, he hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So what is he showing us, though? One group received swift destruction, but one group is reserved. So some are going to be destroyed, but some are going to be what? reserved amen he's just bringing these things together like we are so some are going to be destroyed some are going to be reserved that's that's the lord wants us to see these things even as sodom and gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication going after strange flesh are set forth for a what an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. But these speak evil of those things which they what? Know not. What did Peter say? Just go back up to what Peter said. Just go back to what Peter says. Amen. Let's see what Peter says. Um, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand what? Not. So they're talking about the same people. Amen. These brute beasts. So they, Peter calls them brute beasts. So let's see what Jude calls them. 
He says, but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know what? Naturally as brute beast. All right. Keep this in mind. When we come here, the Lord wants us to understand things how? He, he wants us to understand things how? We need to understand both, right? But what gives life? Spiritually. So there are people in this movement who are only going to understand things how? Naturally. And when this light comes, it's what? It's spiritual. What are they going to do? They're going to resist it. And they're going to call it a what? The Lord is revealing who these brute beasts are. Who only see things naturally. This is talking about us now. If we only understand God's word naturally, we're going to resist this light that comes here. We're going to fight it. From what I'm seeing through studying, it doesn't matter who we are. At this point, it does not matter who we are. It don't matter how much knowledge we have. If we only view things naturally in the upper room, how did Judas view things? Naturally. He wanted a natural kingdom. But Christ came to set up a spiritual kingdom. And the disciples received the spiritual understanding. But he refused. He, he became a brute beast. And Satan, that's why Satan entered into him. Y'all follow? He clung to the natural. And he refused the spiritual. Amen? And, and the, Lord is, the Lord gave him up. So this is our last opportunity to unite ourselves with the spiritual. That's it. Right there. If we don't do it, we're not going any further. Amen. If we don't do it, we have to teach this. If we don't do it, we are not going any further. And the Lord gave us this time to accept this understanding, to, to understand these things. He's given us this time to, to wash, to gather the oil, receive the communication, prepare our hearts. Valerie went over. This is the breaking up of the ground. Amen. Right in this time, we should be breaking up the ground. The Lord is about to plant a seed. That's what he's about to do. He's about to introduce a seed right here. And one group always kills the seed. One class always kill the seed. Now the evil seed is in us. We got to kill it. Right? So why is the Lord telling us this? Because all these things are written for our ensamples upon whom the what? The ends of the world have come so that we don't do it. We don't fight the light that, that, that comes here. Con we're going to continue. I want to bring this together a little bit more for us so that we can see it. It says, but they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. So they perish, right? The swines perish. Pharaoh perish. The Sodomites perish. He's, he's bringing these things together. And it says, these are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves with what? Without what? All right. So how many of us are sitting in here feeding ourselves without fear? Yeah, that's what he said. He says they're in your feast. Judas was in the feast. Was he fearing? He was feeding himself with the wine and the bread, right? He was eating it without fear. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does Amos 3, 7 says? The lion hath what? Who will not what? That's what the Lord is going to show right here. Who will not fear? Amen? It's a question. The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The Lord is going to allow an event to come to pass. Who will not fear? The Sodomites seen this. They saw the angel. Did they fear? No, they didn't fear. They didn't recognize the manifestation of the divineness in the angels. The angels is a symbol. So the Lord is going to manifest something here, and some people are not going to recognize this manifest, and they're not going to fear. If you reject the first and the second. So this light comes to show who has what? Rejected the first and the second. Who will not fear? But the demoniacs, Ellen White says that Christ told them to stop and they stopped and they and she says they recognized that there was one there to deliver them. Amen. And they feared the two demoniacs feared. So one group 
is not going to fear this manifestation that the Lord is about to manifest before us. And they're going to continue to eat in our feast. But right here, they go no further. They go no further. The Lord is, is, is going to put a stop to this. This, this is dealing with us. I, I hope that we're seeing these connections. But let us, bring it, let us bring it together a little more. Go to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. Because Peter says they speak evil of what they don't understand. Jude said they speak, they speak evil of what, of, of, what, of what they know not. They only speak naturally. They can only understand things naturally. That's the only way they can see it. They can only understand things like Daniel 1140 is talking about the papacy and atheism. But when we give this understanding that is talking about Christ and Satan, something spiritual, heavenly, they can't see it. You follow? They can't understand it. Daniel 1140 is only talking about this. It's only taught, no, and then the spiritual man comes and says, look, it's about Christ and Satan. But the natural man says, no, it's not about Christ and Satan. It's only about the papacy and, 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 and atheism. It's only about earthly kingdoms. And God is, since, since the last year, since when the lockdown, where has God been trying to take our minds? To heaven, to heaven right? Mm -hmm. And the Bible says we're going to be exalted to heaven. What does that mean? Spiritual elevation. We're going to only see things spiritually from that point forward. Not that we, the natural is, is, is gone from view. It's just, it just gets swallowed up in the spiritual understanding. We understand what those things are now pointing to. Amen. We can see and understand the way God sees and understand things. Praise the Lord for that. If we're faithful, this is the experience we're really going to have. In measure, greater measure at the end. Amen. Because we got to endure to the end. It doesn't stop here. We got to endure all, and, and hopefully we'll see this. So let's go to 1 Corinthians. It says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The, keep this in mind. The things which God has prepared for them that what? So right here, right, we said this is the bedchamber, right? The Lord prepared something for us in here. Something is prepared for us in here. But what does the Bible say? I have not seen nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Right. So those who love God from this time, there's something prepared for them when we get in here. What's prepared for them? A revelation. Amen. A revelation is prepared for, for God. For, for those of us who fear God, a revelation is prepared for us in this time. Yes, he's going to appoint you your work. Amen. Amen. But it's still going to be fearful. I want us to see this. I, I pray we're following the thought and following this. So go down, go back to 1 Corinthians. It says, but God hath what? Reveal them unto us by his what? For the, for the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the what? Deep. All right. So when we get in here, what are we going to search? The deep things. We're going to search the deep things. Well, let's see what the Bible says the deep things are. Um, all the Bibles is talking about the deep things, right? One quick point about Isaiah. I love that he says, um, it has not entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them that wait. Ah, uh, amen. Yes, amen. Nice. So there's, a, there's, there's a waiting that we're doing right now. It's, it's Christ goes on and says, wait here. Amen. I'm going to receive right here. Amen. the kingdom. Amen. So there's a revelation at the beginning. And there's a revelation at the end, right? It's like Sunan is saying, we're waiting for a revelation. What are we saying? After three years, what's going to happen? What's going to happen after three years? Judges 9. A, whole, a, a fulfillment of prophecy, right? And when this fulfillment happened to us, great is, is praise the Lord, right? Because it happened according to our word. Amen. That's, it's it's going to happen. And we know when it happens, the Lord is setting up kings and taking down kings. So let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel. Um, go down with me to verse 22. He revealeth the what? What did Paul say? He revealed it by his what? By his spirit. So Daniel is experiencing what Paul said. Amen. Did Daniel know this? No, Daniel didn't know this. Daniel didn't know what kingdom was coming after Babylon. He had no idea. So the deep things of God is the fall, is the rise and fall of nations. Daniel thought he was going to be free after seven. Yes, amen. So Daniel had an incorrect understanding. 
And this revelation corrected it. Amen. So right now we all still have an incorrect understanding of some things. And this revelation, what is it going to do? Correct it. But the natural man receives not the spirit of God. Oh, yeah, praise the Lord, You're, but it's still incorrect. It's correct, but incorrect. Amen. Amen. That's, I like that better. I like that. The spiritual understanding. Amen. I like that better. That's nice. So there's something that we have incorrectly. We only see it naturally, right? But when we get here, the Lord is going to give us a spiritual revelation of, of that thing that we can own. Right now, we're seeing something only naturally. All of us, everyone in this movement, no matter who it is, with which ministry. There's something we understand and we only see it naturally. But when we get here, the Lord is going to show it to us spiritually, but it's going to cause a shaking. You felt right? Amen. It's going to cause a shaking. When he shows it to us, because what is it going to reveal? The natural man doesn't want the spiritual understanding. Amen. Our heart don't want the spiritual understanding. But if we love God, we're going to surrender to the higher power. Amen. I, I want us to see the Lord is about to open up something to us and he wants us to understand. It's going to shake every single last person in this movement. Everybody will be shaken. It's only going to reveal who loves the truth from who doesn't love the truth. That's all it's going to reveal. Amen. He was still bound. Amen. The way we expect it to. Amen. So, by the grace of God, I, I, the Lord is giving us this time to prepare for it. He's given us this time to prepare for this reverence. How do we prepare for it? I've told you. Before it come to pass, so that when it has come to pass, you what? Might believe. So the Lord is telling us before it comes, so that when it comes, we would believe. And instead of running from the revelation, we hold on to his feet like Peter. And we say, Lord, I will not let thee go unless thou bless me. Amen. That was Jacob. It was Peter. It was Paul. And you can go, you can go, Job. You, you can go on and on and on and on and on. So let's go down. The, um, he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. This is the darkness right here. And the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. So when this is revealed in this time, we're going to be learning it. This, this time is given to us. Whatever the Lord's going to reveal, we have this time to, 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 to settle into it. Amen? We have this time to settle into it. And the Lord is going to manifest something powerful at the end for those who have settled into it. Lot had to settle into receiving those angels. As soon as they came in his house, he had to settle into it. What does that mean? As soon as Lot went into the house, something was revealed to him. And as soon as it was revealed to him, the men came to the house. And they troubled him. Satan was trying to remove Lot from the revelation. Amen. This is what I want us to see. Now go to the next one. Yes, they feasted. Amen. So something was being revealed to Lot in that house. Do we know what it is? Did the Lord tell us in that story? It's a secret. You follow? Only those who come in the house will understand what was being revealed to him. Because we are the Lot at the end of the world. Amen. That's us. We're here at the end of the world and we've got to enter into this experience. And now we will know what was revealed to those in, in, in the dark. Is that Daniel? Yes, it's Daniel. And, and it goes on and on. Daniel, too, is showing us naturally. Right. Right here. Right. It's natural. But there's a spiritual understanding that we must understand. So God is going to reveal something else pertaining to this. He's going to explain what Babylon, all these things is going to be opened up to those who come into this time. It's beyond that. Yes, it goes on into eternity. Amen. So go down to this next one. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the what? No man can teach us this. That's what I want to get to. What the Lord's about to reveal here, I can't teach any of y'all. 
Nobody in this movement will be able to teach it to you. Amen. So who, who's going to teach this to you? Or who? Gabriel. Amen. So right here, this Daniel 11, no man taught it to Daniel. No, Daniel 2, nobody taught it to Daniel. Right? You follow? They represent a group of people at the end of the world. They represent somebody who's going to be getting revelations that no man can give this to them. And the only way we're going to get it, we have to receive it from the man out here. You follow? The first and the second angel is taught by men. I hope y'all uh, uh, are getting that. But the third angel is taught by who? Christ. It's not, I mean, Christ is always teaching, but there's a way that he works. How do we prove what? Amen. Yes. But only Daniel received it. I Amen. Want, I want us to see that. We are not to sit here and think, well, well, because only Daniel received it, we don't have to pray for it. We're all going to pray for it as a movement, but one or two men in our movement, three, four, five men in our movement is going to get it, and the rest of us has to Submit. accept the, the message that comes from God through his messenger. Amen. Right? Because I know Kanan is saying, we all need the revelation. I know some of us going on might go home thinking, well, I don't know if I'm going to get that revelation. But the truth is, we all have to pray for it. Because we don't know through whom God is going to raise up. And because the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? But we don't know through whom God is going to. So Daniel and all his friends prayed for the revelation. And the Bible says, Daniel received it in the night vision. The reason why I'm saying that is, when the Lord causes a shaking, we won't be able to trust anybody. You're going to have to, everyone's going to have to get it for themselves. That's, I, I mean, I hear what he's saying. That's always true, and I think that's what you're saying. I think that's what you're asking. No, um, how do we prove? Um, no, you were saying that the fourth and second angel was preached by witness. Preached or preached by men. I got you. Something like that. Yeah, that. first and second. Yeah. Millerite history. Yeah. Also yeah, when you go to Millerite history, the Lord raised up men to teach that message. But when you come to October 22nd, who revealed all of those things to them? God, God revealed it to them. Yeah, they, I mean, Ellen came after, though. They all, they have to accept it, and then Ellen gets the revelation. Then she gets it. Just go back to the history. Ellen had to accept it herself. She wasn't going to get anything until she accepted it. Yeah, they, Edson went out, he, God showed it to him, he accepted it, and, and so forth and so forth. But they all ended up seeing it is the point. The Lord showed it to them, and they all, and they, you have to see it for yourself. I'm not going to come up here and teach you to go listen to some man merely. That's one aspect of how God works. At the end of the day, we must see these things for ourselves. Amen. We have to see it. And we don't go try to, to, to create a message of our own devising. The Lord uses men and the men sets forth what the Lord is showing. And it's up to us to go see whether those things be so. When we go see whether those things be so, then the Lord will show you for yourself. He will show you that what those men are saying are so. It is true what they're saying. And you, got, you now receive the revelation for yourself. Amen. It's true what Swinton is saying. Yes, when this light comes here, it's obvious the Lord's going to give it to somebody who's asking for it. Right? Amen. Yes, we have. From this point, we should be praying for it, right? And the fact that we're here standing up and teaching this, what are we, what are we, what are, what, basically, what am I urging y'all to do? Search and to plead with God to have the error removed from your heart so you can receive this. Amen. That's what we should all be doing right now. Pleading with God to have the error removed. Whatever error is in me, search me, O oh God, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That's what we should be doing right now. And if we're, you know, the Bible says, if any man will have to do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. But I don't want us to miss this point. I don't want to go too long. Deep things. The Lord is going to reveal deep things in this time. Let us prove this a little more. So Paul says, The things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in words which man wisdom teaches. So this teaching is not according to man's wisdom. This is, this is a divine knowledge the Lord is about to show us. There's a different way of, of expressing divine things. Amen. Uh, that Daniel 2 was Daniel 11 was illustrated not according to man's wisdom. Gabriel said, there's no one that holds with me in these things but Michael, your prince. 
This wisdom that was given to Daniel, no one, nobody else can teach it but, but God. It's a divine revelation. So is Daniel 2, 7 and all those. So it says, goes on. Not in the word which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the what? But the brute beast receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness unto him. Paul is talking about the same people, right? Paul, Peter, and Judas talking about the same people. The brute beast receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are what? So there's a group here that can't discern things spiritually, and they won't know or understand this light that's going to come here. And because they don't know, why don't they know? They didn't spend the time in this time trying to see things spiritually they rather just see uh meets persians greece rome okay that's that's really nice amen but they don't want to see how trump biden obama bush clinton how these people were prophesied in the scriptures leading down to this time right we need to see that but now we need to see how reagan bush clinton obama trump are pointing to something in the future right so the Lord is going to open up what they were pointing to in the past, now what they're pointing to in the future. And we're going to give this spiritual as something future. It's something that's going to come in the future. Amen. That's true. He was righteous. Amen. We look at that naturally. Why did a lot give them his daughters? Is that because we know that you know we wouldn't do such a thing. You know, that's how we would look at it. I mean, that, 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 that doesn't seem right. But that's a spiritual meaning in it that only those who, who received a lot then had understood something. So then what are we going to give here? What are we going to give our here? Daughters. Our two daughters. Yeah. So then we need to understand what our two daughters are. Yeah, that's one, that's one aspect. That's one aspect. Yes. All right. Deuteronomy 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to who? Belong to us. What I want us to see here that um, this is taught in Revelation 14 and Revelation 10. Even though the Lord reveals something here, there's still going to be something that's secret. Y'all follow? Every time the Lord revealed, he comes down with a little book. But what utters his voice? Seven thunders, right? And, get, and John was told to seal it up. So we, there's a revelation, something revealed, but there's something that's still shut up. So what is the Lord doing? He's encouraging us to go to the end. That as, even though he reveals something here, something is still shut up that we won't get till the end. And we must, walk, we must eat what's in the book and walk in the light of that until we get to the end. And then he reveals something to us. But then he's going to open up something else that we don't understand. And he's encouraging us to keep going forward. He's giving us a taste here, and we get this taste, but we just got to keep going until the second coming. You know, it's, it's, he's, he's encouraging us. But um, so Psalms 25 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that what? But Jews said they were eating without what? They were eating without fear. So, so the group that's eating without fear is not going to understand this revelation that the Lord is going to show. So let us look at some deep things. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are what? Very deep. So let's look up this word deep. It means depth or profound. So the Lord is going to show us something here that's profound, right? He's going to show us something very profound. So let's look at what profound means. It means deep, descending, or being far below the what? So where is the Lord going to take us? Far below the surface. How do I know that's true? What story illustrates that? Easy story. Jonah. Jonah. Amen. That's really nice. I never thought about that one. That's a really nice one. Amen. He took Jonah far below, right? Christ yes, Christ. He took him. Amen. Because it's Jonah. But that. All right. So yeah, really use some really easy ones. Um, with the pit. Amen. But I was thinking of the Red Sea. Amen. The Lord took them far beneath the surface, right? 
he parted the Red Sea. And the Red Sea, when you go into the Bible, it means depth, deep, right? So the Lord revealed to them the deep things when they reached the Red Sea. The Lord was revealing some. The Lord did something very profound. No one has never seen that ever before. Waters, waters stood up like a wall on both their sides. And Israel went, Israel walked in that light. So when this light comes, it's going to be very profound, very deep. Now, look at this. Let's continue with profound. Continue. It means intellectually what? Deep. That enters deeply into subject, not superficial or what? And when you look up obvious, it's not on the surface. What the Lord is about to show us right here at this point, you can't just open up your Bible and see it. You follow? So the natural man only opens up his Bible and read what he sees. That's what the natural man does. That's how do we study? Do we only open up our Bible and read? Okay, they crossed the Red Sea. Man, that God did a wonderful thing. Praise the Lord. Is that all we get? Is that all we should get? But here's what we're getting, right? The Lord has shown us that the parting of the Red Sea is the opening up of our mind. He's going to open up our mind so that we can understand the deep because it's not by might, nor by strength, but by what? My spirit, right? And what did, what did Paul say? This revelation doesn't come by man, it comes by what? His spirit. And God is going to use us weaklings to, to manifest a powerful man. He's about to show us something that no one in the world has ever seen in all of their life of reading the Bible. Nobody. Go ahead. Amen. Right. So when you see him high and lifted up, you see yourself in relation to him. You see yourself filthy, but at the same time, you also see his power to take you away from that filthiness. Amen. Right. So you, that's why Peter wanted to go, but he wanted to stay. Amen. Right. So the only other place you see the Red Sea open, the any sea parted, is in creation. Ah, oh, that's nice. So Christ is about yeah. to show us how you go from, from a sinner. To, to a saint, saint. He's that's about nice. To show you oh, you connect the two. Yeah. Because he says in the beginning, he says, and the, the, the spirit of God moved where? Upon the face Upon of the, the deep. Face of the deep. Oh, that's and nice. God said, Let there, be Let there be light. Light. What he's about to reveal to us only gets revealed to hearts that are converted. Amen. If, 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 if because the secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. She says conversion is a miracle. Amen. He's about to perform the miracle of conversion, yes. but only a certain type of people. But He shows you first. Because he has to show you your filthiness to show you how, and then show you what Christ is. How Amen. you can get from this filthiness to that state. To this, to this, but, but he has to destroy men to do it. Because men have to take your sin. Because, and that's why he's teaching us to really, cast it out. Really Amen. And I, I'm, I hope we're following what he's saying. And that's why, I, I'm, as I'm presenting, it strikes me as, as you learn this. Because when the Lord is showing you, if the Bible says if he's showing us this, He's about to perform it. Amen. And the reason why we've been taking this long, the Lord's been delaying because God is merciful. The Bible says he doesn't delight in the death of anybody. He's merciful. So he's suffering long. He wants us to understand. And, and but this is the point that he's shown us that we have till this point to really allow this to sink in our minds. And, and he's going to perform this. And unfortunately, the foolish virgins realize too late how serious it is. They wake up at the very time he's doing the work. Right? But it's too late. They've never prepared themselves for when he's going to do the work. But I want us to see, I don't want us to miss this. Go back to, to, to deep. So deep means, or obvious to the mind, as a profound investigation, profound reasoning, a profound treatise. Look up profound, go down. The deep, the sea. So profound means what? The sea. So when the Lord took them to the Red Sea, he was getting ready to show them something profound. He was going to show them something they've never, ever seen in all their life that was going to cast Satan out of their life forever. I'm in marriage. Oh, yes. In Ezekiel 8. Yes. Amen. He's going to help us to understand it. So going back to it, the Lord is about to open up some really profound things. And, and it's not obvious. It's going to challenge our thought. 
It's going to challenge the way we understand and the way we view things. It's going to challenge us. But just because it challenges you, don't run from it. But you're going to run from it based upon how you handle the challenges now. How do you handle the challenge when somebody challenges? Do you get upset every time someone don't see what you're saying? Do you get upset just because somebody is not understanding you or you're not understanding them? How do you deal with these things? Do you turn away? I don't want to hear this and go about your business because you're going to do the same thing there. You follow? It, we can't do that. We, 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 should be, we should be changing this habit of how we handle things that challenges our thinking. If it challenges you, yes, it may be right, it may be wrong. It challenges your thinking. But we have a Bible, right? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. Satan knows that God is about to do something profound. So what do you think he's going to do? Something profound. He's about, God is about to permit him to shake the earth like it's never been shaken before for a brief moment. We're about to see some really profound things. Amen. So let's go back to John 14. Let's, I'm continuing with this deep. I might be a little bit over, but it says, Now a thing was, so keep this. Notice what I kept highlighting. Thing, 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 thing. Right? So there's something the Lord wants us to understand. Amen. So it says, now a thing was secretly brought to me and mine ear received a little thereof in thoughts from the vision. So how's the secret going to come to the thought? Right. This is how God communicates to us. That's why we got to eat right. So we don't destroy the brain, destroys ability to think. So going on, that's why Satan is making vaccines and all of these things to destroys people's capability to think. But praise God, he's about to do something supernatural and deliver some people from some of those things. Give them an opportunity to think. How do I know that? That's what he did in Matthew 8 for the demoniacs. Right? He did it for Paul. He did, so some people the Lord is going to deliver from that. Some people is not going to receive it. Genesis 19. Amen? That's what he's shown us. They prepared themselves for that role. And the demoniacs prepared themselves to receive Christ. And Christ came to them. Even though in their demonic state, somehow Christ came to them. It says... In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on man. All right, so deep is connected to sleep. All right, when deep sleep falleth on man, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to what? What comes to mind? Bones, deep sleep. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got, praise the Lord, you guys are on a roll. Amen. I was thinking Genesis with, with, with oh man, Adam. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. So like Swindon said, marriage is going to be revealed here. Amen? Amen. Sabbath is going to be revealed here. But how does this revelation come? We got to be asleep. Well, all right. Well, how do we sleep? What does it mean we got to be in a deep sleep? Yes, we, but we got to be in a deep sleep in order to receive this. What is a deep sleep? Just think, think naturally. If someone's sleeping deeply, if I'm sleeping deeply, what, what's, what's going on? Will I know? Yeah. Mm, amen. Unconscious. I'm going to take that word. Let's read on. It says, visions of the night when deep sleep falleth on man. Notice what the Bible says. It's connect. Fear came. So when this comes, fear is going to come. Fear is about to come upon because Satan is going to cause fear. That's what he's going to do. Fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake and go down. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. What come to mind? Daniel 2, right? Not only Daniel 2, the Lord says, let us make man in our what? So the Lord is going to reveal, like Swindon said, creation, how he's going to recreate us new. Amen? And, but, but when he shows it to us, it's profound. It's going to challenge our thought. But when we receive it, it's going to be beautiful. And the natural man, they will not understand the words that comes out of our mouth. But those who, are, those who have Christ's spirit in them, those men are not drunk. What they're saying, that's true. That's the spirit of because God, this is what's going to separate God's people. This is what's going to separate us. This is what's going to determine who's natural and who's spiritual. Right there. Amen. 
Amen. Because the Lord possessed me in the beginning of the way. It's a possession. It's oh, a amen. Ah, uh, yes. Amen. Ellen White. Every time she goes into vision, she, she, she Christ moves. possesses her. She, so the Lord possesses you, and He says, "A body thou hast prepared, prepared me." Amen. Ah, this, oh, this is nice. By putting you to sleep, He's possessing you to put Christ in you. Amen. Why can't you do that with your eyes open? Mm. No, nope, because you'd resist. Yeah. I'm gonna so, show you why you'd resist. So Yes, you resist. The natural things will make you resist. So if you only have a natural understanding, what are you going to do? Resist this work. So what does Christ have to do? Cause a deep sleep to come upon us so that we don't resist this work. Amen. By the wrong spirit. Yes. Amen. He goes into vision too. Yes, he, because he received strong what? Delusion. Delusion. That he should believe a lie. That he might be damned. Right there. Right there. It's, it's fearful, right? But it's encouraging at the same time. It's sweet, and, amen, but it's bitter. And, and we, we just got to hold on to Christ. That's all. But let's continue. I'm going to be a little long because I believe this is important to understand. So it says, Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was what? Silence. And I, so there's going to be silence for some people here. Go on. And I heard a voice saying, what are we going to hear? My sheep's what? Hear my voice. In the midst of the storm, they're going to hear that voice says, peace be still. Amen. Christ is going to reveal some profound things to those who receive that voice. Well, let's continue. Genesis 2. Connecting the two, the deep sleep. And the Lord God caused a what? Deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead. The rib is the bone. So it's connected to Job. The Lord took a bone. So every time there's a deep sleep, there's a bone. The Lord is taking this bone. And he's about to, he's about to make his church. The Lord is about to set up his movement. He's going to take a bone from Adam and set up this church. This is what he's about to do. Genesis 15. And when the sun was going down, a what? A deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and lo, a what? A horror of great darkness fell upon him. So what is God going to allow Satan to do? A horror of great darkness. Even though there's great light, great darkness. God is going to work. Satan is going to work. He's going to try to make us reject this revelation. That's his office, right? That's his office. He's going to resist it, but God is going to send a strong east wind and hold him back. And he's going to give you an opportunity to go forward. And he, what is he going to say? Go forward. That's what Christ is going to... And, if you, and he says, go walk in the light, lest gross darkness, what? Comes upon you. So when the Lord reveals this light, you better walk in it. And do not allow the things around you to prevent you from walking in it. Brethren, I'm telling us we're about to struggle for a little bit. Amen? Amen? We're about to struggle for a little bit. And if we keep complaining at all these struggles the Lord brings us into, we're going to do a worse of complaining here. If we keep on fussing about not having money sometimes, not having this and that, if we can't overcome that, that spirit, those are little. <laughs> what are we going to do here? This is really before us. It's really before us. I don't know how I'm going to respond. That's why we can't trust into flesh. We have to trust if, if we're hearing God's voice as these things are being presented, hold on to that voice. The man may fail, but that voice that he was proclaiming will not fail. Even though Samuel Snow proclaimed that voice at the midnight cry, he failed at the end, right? But did the voice fail? No, the Millerites held on to that voice that God used him to bring. It's the voice we hold on to. Hold on to that. Amen. So, so, go ahead. Genesis 15, 12, that's 538. Because what is 538 to 1798? 538, 1798. Oh, amen. Grace Darnett. Amen. So, okay. a horror of great darkness. Oh, yes, because she, she says it was a captivity in Egypt. Oh, amen. Amen. So, as I'm understanding it, we're going to see the power that's going to bring this earth into great darkness. Amen. Right there. We're going to see him. He's going to reveal himself. So let's go back to Job now. Job 33. Bringing this deep together. So what does it mean to be in a deep sleep? We all know, and I'm, I'm, we're going to see when I read it, y'all going to say, oh, that's what that means. All right, let's go on. 
It says, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the what? Where is God taking us? The bedchamber. He's taking us to the bedchamber. He's about to, he's about to co communicate with this church. It says, Then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their what? So when it's the deep sleep, it's a sealing work taking place. Amen. It says, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is, ch he's what? So what is the Lord going to do in here? He's going to chasing us. The Lord, whom the Lord love it, what does he do? Brethren, we're about to enter into something that's going to really try us. I'm telling us, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. We're about to be tried. We've never been tried like this before. This is a new experience for us. But I praise God if he's bringing us into the fire. Ellen White says he never puts into the fire worthless material. Right? If we're going into this, praise the Lord, some of us are not worthless material. We're going to come out as gold tried in the fire. Amen? We're going to come out lustering right here after this. It's going to be a beautiful experience, but it's going to be a painful experience at the same time, right? It's the revelation that he's going to give us that's going to make us forget the pain. Amen? But if we're, if, but if we're not overcoming the pain in this time, then what is that saying about this time? We got to keep in mind the little things we're passing through right now, they're ordained of God. They're all ordained. If you see me complaining, rebuke me, right? If you see me complaining about any state or condition I'm in, rebuke me, remind me, keep me in remembrance. Canard, this is ordained of God. Deal with it. Suck it up and quit crying. Amen? So if you see me do that to you, don't get mad with me. I'm trying to help you because whom the Lord loves, he chastens. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to make you feel bad if, if somebody passed away and I'm telling you, man, look, there's counsel for that. Rise above that. Right? There's no money to pay this. Man, suck it up. Rise above that. Amen? Because we're about to engage into a battle like we've never engaged in. Satan is going to be so angry with, us, with this camp. Lot's house, we're going to get surrounded. And we, we have to rise above that. Lot rolls above it. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Ah, praise the Lord. Amen. That's nice. Also, Lot is also teaching twofold because as Satan surpasses us, just like um, just like Joshua, we must have faith that we are also compassed by holy angels, and we have the angel of the Lord that is to stand by our side because the Lord has a promise that He will never leave, leave us nor forsake us. So in that deep trial, we must hold fast. Amen. So I'm going to come to a close now. It says, He chastened also with pain upon his bed and a multitude of his bones with strong pain. Go down. So now I'm going to explain deep sleep and I'm going to close out. It says, I was unable to attend any of the business meetings and had no voice in anything. When the responsibilities were laid upon my husband, I knew nothing of it. I was in my tent, too feeble to sit up, and upon that special occasion, what? Deep sleep came upon me and I was what? oblivious to everything next let's get a next witness let's get a next witness James it's not going to mean anything to us amen I fear no evil amen it's in the shadow of death we're in the bed that deep think about it when a husband and wife go in a room is the light on when they make love is the light on no the light is off right they're in a deep sleep. It's a moment. It's a moment only for the two of them. It's their moment. It's your moment. This is a moment for God and his church. It's only for their moment. Amen. So going on, it says, James White, who was present, invited those who had doubts to come forward and see for themselves. He explained that Mrs. White, while in what? Vision was completely oblivious to everything around her. The storm is going to be blowing, but when Christ was walking on the water, he was oblivious to everything around him. Christ was asleep. He was in a deep sleep. What does it mean to be in deep sleep? Deep meditation on what God is revealing to you. 
that, amen, this revelation that God is going to reveal to us is going to drown out the cares of this life. So what does that mean? Satan can't use the cares of this life to bring you in his net anymore. Amen? He's cast out. He can't use the cares anymore. It doesn't work. So what does he do? He has to come in a new manifestation. When he's found out in one, he just changes form. Amen? Jonah was asleep. Yes. Christ was asleep. And then he rose up and said, peace be still. Jonah said, throw me into the water and the, the storm will go away. So they both bring you to the river of Hamel, peace. Amen. But that only prepares you for the cross. Because when Jonah, when Jonah says, throw me over, where is he thrown? Okay. Into the wheel. Into the belly. Yeah. So now you come to the second trouble. Amen. And now you're dealing with that second half of the trouble. Amen. And that's right after there. It just gets worse. It gets worse. Because he's trying to prevent us from getting to the end. He doesn't want us to get to the end. Last, last, last part and I'm done. Vision. What does vision mean? In scripture, a revelation from God, an appearance or exhibition of something what? Supernaturally presented to the what? To the minds of the prophets by which they were informed of what? So what is the Lord about to open up to us? But they're spiritually what? Discern. But the natural man, the brute beast, is going to say, that's not from God. And it's a, amen. It's, so if we only see things naturally, we're going, to, we're going to reject this revelation. And this applies to anybody in this world, more so in this movement. More so in this movement. The Lord is about to show us something very profound. We've never seen it before. It's not lying on the surface. That means we've been reading it all this time and we haven't seen it. Even right now, we're probably reading it and still don't see what he's about to show us. And then when he shows it to us, oh my goodness, I've been reading that all this time. Yes, we have been reading it all this time. But the natural man is not going to receive it. Amen. Amen. So I, I pray that this, I, my hope is this, that prepares us for, 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 for this. I didn't get to the other part, but maybe another day we'll, we'll go into that. Um, but let us close out with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you there, God, once again for helping us to understand these things. Please forgive us of our sins. And Lord, we really pray and ask that you would please help us to prepare for what you're about to permit to come upon the earth. And we ask, Lord, that you help us to receive these truths for the only thing that's going to be precious in every and all prices is just truth. Money is going to be valueless. Homes, valueless. Everything is not going to, earthly things will not be of any support to us as we progress in walking in as walking the truth. Truth is the only thing that's going to be of value. For those who hold, hold the truth or hold in the house, the money and everything they need that will deliver them at the end. So please help us to understand these things. Um, please help us to make right use of these revelations, Lord. And we pray for those that don't understand it, that you please guide them aright, that you help them not to resist, but that they would go on their knees like Nathaniel and ask you to explain these things to them. And the promise is that you will. So please help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.